weekend's action from the Talchin Cup. Uh, so we'll just have a look at some of the uh, games on uh, on screen here. So as you can see there, it was awfully 214, Wexford 122. Sensational result actually for, for Wexford, a result that not many seen uh, coming. And it's actually the second year in a row that Wexford have gone away to Offaly and beat them in their own backyard. As you can see there, listed the scores. Mark Rossiter won four. Owen Nolan, obviously, on the score sheet as well. Carlo, good win for them against New York. I did watch the game on GA. Go. Uh, New York were actually leading at half time, and there was actually a, a brief moment in the game where you thought like New York could uh, could pull it off. But I suppose thoughts on, uh, on on both of those two games, first of all? Yeah, well, starting with the Wexford Offaly one, I mean, wow. Like for, for Wexford to get all of their scores from play, I mean, that's the first thing that you'd look at it and go, like, yeah. well, what is going on here? Like 122 from play. Uh, Mark Rossiter at 1 4. Owen Nolan with four points. Brian Malloy with three. Robbie, Bo- Robbie Brooks, Kevin O'Grady, Glenn Malone, Ben Brosnan, all with two points. Just outstanding from Wexford. Absolutely fantastic. And John Hegarty there. Look, there's an element of a bit of consistency coming with this Wexford football team. Like that they're mm-hmm. actually starting to put it together a few results because over the last few years, Wexford were just as likely to prove you wrong when you were written them off for a defeat. And then the minute you expected them to, you know, put a team to the sword that they probably should, they wouldn't turn up. And now they're, you know, building it in a little bit more consistency. And it, it's fantastic to see. Awfully again, two players sent off two games in a row. Um, like the cabin games, that's definitely something that they need to look at. Honestly, don't know what's going on. I don't know how they lost this game, to be honest. Like Wexford at home, if they're talking about, you know, trying to get promoted out of Division 3, this has to be a game that they win. This has to be a game that they win at home. Like So they'll be very, very disappointed. But for Wexford and for John Hegarty, be absolutely delighted. Like it's serious signs of progression. And when you look at it, they have some serious talent coming through, the likes of Liam Coleman, the likes of Mark Rossiter. Promising, promising signs for Wexford right now. As for Carlo, New York, like Carlo having a great old time of it in the Tolgen Cup, third win in this year's competition. And uh, crazy moment, Shane Bulger, obviously from Carlo, playing against Carlo with New York. And his dad there is, uh, is chairman of Carlo GAA. And they got a picture at the end that was on uh, Loaf of Bread GAA's Instagram. Obviously, big shout out to him. And uh, yeah, moment made possible by the Tolgen Cup. But I, I, wonder, I wonder who his dad was supporting watching on the sideline. Yeah, it's it's mad, isn't it? The GA like they always throw these these things up, like um, and it, it always seems to happen, um, which is which is obviously mad and, and great to see. Yeah, the GA Pro says here, I'd say Wexford are the most unpredictable team Agreed. in Division Four. You never know how they'll play. Yeah, like and obviously it's I think it's John Hegarty's first year there, um, so like he's he, he does seem to be onto something. And Wexford, like they, I know they they come up again. We'll, we'll have a look at the quarterfinal draw in a minute, but Wexford, like they're. They're serious dark horses now, in my opinion, to possibly win this competition. Like because when you think about it, like they beat Offaly, one of the contenders. Like Offaly were definitely one of the contenders. They beat them in their own backyard. They came through a difficult group um, that they were in. Um, you can obviously see it there on the screen a little bit above. So, like fair play, fair play to Wexford. Like they're 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 a team that you know might just be dark horses for this competition now. Um. I'm not 100% sure if I agree with you that they're for, to win the competition, um, not quite. I, I, I think they have a serious chance. Really? I don't know. I, I'm still there. Like For me, Down, Meath and Cavan are still a level above, in my opinion. And look, that sounds that sounds mad. Awfully beat Meath. But mm. <laughs> like, I still think Cavan will probably be too strong. Yeah, yeah, um, no, I do. Yeah, I do. But look, but look at the same time, like Wexford have made such huge strides, and look, there has been like, take a look at the next result, Leash beating from Anna. But mm. it would blow me away if Wexford won the Tolton Cup. I would be absolutely stunned and amazed if they did it. And you know, like I would be delighted because I have a soft spot for Wexford. Like I spent a lot of my summers there growing up, so I've always you know liked them as a team. And uh, yeah, I feel like. Look, this result will give them huge confidence. There's no doubt about that. This result will give them huge confidence. And obviously, we're going to get into the quarterfinal draw. Like They have me there at the side that awfully beat. So they'll go into that with their you know, their tails up. They'll be ready for that one. 
Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, like I think I think as you said there, I think it is. I think Cavan are the series favourites. Like it is, the, it is their trophy to lose, in my opinion. I think they're they're a good bit the, the favourites. But as you can see there, as you were saying, for Mano one nine, Leash one eleven, definitely a huge shock as well. Arguably a bigger shock um, than than the Wexford Offaly game. Um, just because Wexford have been coming in with a, a great a bit of momentum, Offaly have been coming in, I suppose, on the def- on the back of a heavy defeat to, to Cavan. Whereas in, on this occasion, like for Mana promoted out of Division 2 um, or promoted out of Division 3, obviously in Division 2 next year. Leash, maybe in a similar fashion to Wexford, struggling to get out of Division 4, but a sensational win for them. And I suppose for Down, like they done the business against Longford. I've seen they were losing a, a half time, so a bit of a sticky test for them. But Leash beating for Manor, like what a result that is. Yeah, that's yeah. that's crazy. And uh, like I was talking about this with Matthew yesterday and we were saying like, I was just saying, honestly, Fermanagh have just been bang average in in this uh, Tolton Cup. They've they've mm. completely taken a foot off the gas. Since, since, since they, they since they almost got promoted, since they got promoted, they've yeah. almost sort of yeah. What did they do? Did they just go on the beer as soon as they got promoted? Like it's just I don't know what to be because like they, they go into this and they were in a group where I was thinking, I think let me their group was Antrim, Wexford, and Leitrim. And I was thinking, for Manor should absolutely well, yeah. dust off all three of those teams and go into the next round. You know, I was thinking, for Mana, for me, were my dark horses at the start. They were my dark horses to potentially catch a cabin because they caught them in the league in the last round. They beat them in the league in the last round. And, okay, they draw home to Wexford. Okay, I'm thinking, all right, you know what? Wexford, you know, have looked good in some games in Division 4 this season. It's definitely a surprise. And look, Sean McNally got a black card at a crucial time. These things can happen. Wex would get the draw and then they beat Leitrim in you know convincing fashion and I was thinking okay they're, they're back then they lose back to back games to Antrim and then Leash at home like yeah. there's no excuse for that one a Leash side that had just drawn with London and Parnell Park and should have been beaten by London and Parnell Park because London probably should have hung on at the end like just crazy that it, it flipped this much to only hit 1-9 as well at home just not a good day attacking wise for a team that have some serious talented forwards like the likes of Alton Kelm hasn't hit his form in this uh, Tolton Cup. They have the likes of Ryan Lyons, Sean Quigley as well, who did who did get the goal and was carrying the fight to them. But for me, this is hugely disappointing for Fermanagh. They should have done a lot better. For Leash, it's a bit of a redemption arc in terms now the London defeat is kind of washed away more so that like they can forget about that and move on obviously Limerick next they'll fancy their chances in that game now uh, off the back of this and then um, yeah crazy how quick one game can change a big shout out as well Mark Timmons 37 years of age popping up with 1-1 from centre half back outstanding performance from him um, and yet they're true and then the other game down Longford uh, yeah Longford dogged determined in this game you know Joseph Hagen leading the way with 1-3 yeah, you mentioned that like Longford had them at stages, but then down fought back. Pat Haveron with six points, Andy Gilmore with three, Rory Mason with three, Danny McGill with the goal. Um, my thing is, you look at it and say against Meath, they hit the you know, the wides really cost them. Have they worked on their shooting enough? One twenty suggests that they have got better at it. So we'll be see. It'll be interesting to see now. Obviously, Cavan is going to be one hell of a game in the quarterfinal. Yeah, I mean it's the it's the worst draw possible. I, I felt for down yeah. for 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 down. Like I feel like you probably nearly want them in Crow Park, like just to kind of even it up. But to be going away to Breffney Park would be be such a tough one. And, and there is the draw, so so people can see there. So Limerick against Leash, Mead against Wexford, Cavan against Down, and Antrim versus Carlo. Um, so so four interesting games there as well. Obviously, it'd be great to see one of Antrim or Carlo like get into Crow Park. Like I don't think many people would have. Uh, predicted that at the start of the season uh, in fairness so um great stuff there um but yeah we'll, well i suppose we'll move on and have a look at the uh i suppose minor football championship just briefly and uh obviously run through some of the, the talking points and some of the results that um that happened there so as we can see there should load up for us there the quarter final results so Derry. 113 galway four points um an annihilation there really for for Derry. Uh, Monaghan, huge win for them against Mayo. Obviously, Mayo, the, the All Ireland champions from last year, great win for, for Monaghan. And Dublin obviously came back from the dead. They were six points down at one stage in the second half, and Cork got that penalty. Um, but Dublin came roaring back to win. And as we can see, Kerry beating Kildare 213 
to 111. I don't know if you've seen much of the Dublin court game and, and some of the decisions, but there was definitely definitely some questionable decisions, um, especially when you when you look at it. Like in the in the in the court Kerry game a couple of weeks ago, I'm sure as Matthew Hurley, if he was here now, he would tell us like obviously Paul Ganey didn't get um or or sorry, you know, Paul Ganey obviously got a penalty despite being fouled outside the box and, and Sean Powther was black hearted where in where in this instance the Dublin defender drags a man down for a penalty and doesn't even get a black card. So a bit of inconsistency in some of the, the refereeing decisions. And even towards the end as well, like I talk Cork were a little bit unlucky not to get the free. But in fairness, I did feel that decisions could have went either way. Like I felt like Dublin were a little bit unlucky not to get to some decisions as well. But what were your take on it? Yeah, well, the penalty is the main one. Because obviously, like that's that's a, a fresh wound for Cork that that did change the game against Kerry and like the, that hasn't been consistent even on the day that it was given. That hasn't been consistent because let's not forget that the day that that was given, Niall Scully was fouled against Kildare in a, in my opinion a more obvious goal scoring opportunity than uh, than the Paul Ganey one and no black card, no penalty. So I was like, well, you know. <laughs> They're not even being consistent on the day that they gave that. And the, what's telling is when he went down, Ganey, in my opinion, my first reaction watching it was that none of the Kerry lads were really even like, hey, penalty ref, surely, black hard center. Like, do you know what I mean? They were just like, oh, free. <laughs> like that type of thing. And he was like, all right, penalty. Whereas, yes, I, th- I feel like Cork then surely would be watching it and saying, well, we better get one. And then when, they must have thought, ah, here, like, we've been after after it got done over there a few weeks ago by this decision and now it should have gone our way and it didn't. So I, I fully understand the, the frustration there. My my thought watching it was definitely looked like it should have been a black card and if you're talking about being consistent. Yeah, I think so. Like and I suppose like it was Dara Sheedy who was tripped um and, and like there was an argument that he was very close to the goalkeeper and maybe he wouldn't have necessarily got the shot away but I think at the same time it was a goal scoring opportunity so I think um you know if you're going to give black card and penalty one week for for um decision you know decision a couple of weeks ago I think I think these referees do have to be uh consistent but I did feel all in all that the ref in my opinion done a fairly decent job of the game like I thought he let it flow and um, it wasn't very stop start and I think it showed that in the scoreline like 118 to 212 High scoring game, um, and and I thought it was it was it was two very good sides, uh, both going at it in my uh, in my opinion. But I suppose yeah, before we finish up, uh, maybe player of the week and uh, and moment of the week from from yourself from the weekend's uh, action. Difficult to pick just one. If I was all right, so player of the week is it? Player of the week, I would say probably Conor Whelan. A bit like. Un- unsung, yeah. uh, you know, the you know, I mean, the classic one trick pony, but uh, that yeah. one trick got him one six in an outstanding display against uh, Kilkenny. He is an absolutely outrageously good hurl, and I probably would say, yeah, um, performance of the week, uh, Connor Whelan for me, and moment of the week, you can't look past the Killian Buckley goal, like that's just. I know the Limerick Clare game was outstanding, but Buckley's goal was just like, what is going on? How has that happened? So, yeah, probably player of the week, Conor Whelan, moment of the week, Killian Buckley's goal. Yeah, I think moment of the week, you can't, you can't disagree. Um, in, in fairness, I think you'd, you'd very much have to have to go with that. And, and then player of the week, yeah, like so, so many contenders, like all across the pitch, like I thought Walter Walsh was brilliant for, for Kilkenny in fairness, um, rolling back the years. And Conor Whelan was, was sensational, but probably go for Aaron Galan just for... His performance, yeah. I think, four and one, one ten in total. I thought he was, uh, I thought he was excellent. But, uh, but yeah, I suppose we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. Leave a like, subscribe if people could. Uh, make sure to check out Play on GA, Seamus's podcast when you when you get a chance. And um, yeah, cheers, Shay, for coming on. And uh, yeah, thanks very much to anyone who tuned in. <laughs>